was talking about Lynchburg's schedule. Back in action Wednesday against Randolph. That one's an out ball on the serve. Point for Lynchburg. And then the Hornets are actually off until Friday, October 13th. So it's a, a, a longer break. I guess that's nine days for Lynchburg. They're off until Friday, October 13th. They will host EMU, Eastern Mennonite, inside Turner. We hope you can join us in person or on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. And that'll be back-to-back -back Friday and Saturday, just like we had yesterday and today. Hollins last night, Washington and Lee today. There's one of those wide attacks from off the court by Bree Spainauer. Tipped and missed by Grace Michener. Lynchburg has tied the ball game up. It's a 4-4 tie. Score line there on your screen is uh, going to get adjusted right now. How about that? That's how good our LHSN team is. Tied again. There's one off the fingertips from Riley Dubeck. Oh, big shot there. Generals withstand the contact, and then Abby Barlow tried to slide for the pancake but couldn't get there in time. It is the volleyball brunch, the 11 a.m. start. Maybe we should be making more food references, more, more breakfast food references. I love breakfast food. I should just make those references in every volleyball game. 5-4, Generals have taken the lead again. Keo on one knee, plays it. She'll take one and three and take the point. Excellent stuff from Kaylee Keo, and that's why she's one of the best and really never seems to leave the floor too often for Lynchburg. She can do a little bit of everything. Defensively, just a solid dig, getting down there on a knee to send that over. She attacks, she serves. She probably set a little bit. She is a beach player, so that, that makes sense. There's a mishandle that's going to be a point for Lynchburg. Two contacts, and Lynchburg has taken the lead again, 6-5, with KK serving. Number 17, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. She was part of Beach Volleyball's first victory here at the University of Lynchburg, and she really is just an outstanding all-around player. A skill set that so many volleyball players would love to have. She's put the work in, too. She's earned it, and she'll continue to get better and better. Just a sophomore. Dubek wants another, blocked and roofed. Hornets start to gain some momentum. Spainauer and Meinhardt putting the top on that one and sending it back to the floor. Here's a longer service run for Kaylee Kia. This is what the Hornets need. Stay at that service line for a while. Make it hard for Washington and Lee to side out. Put some pressure. One-handed by Spainauer, and then Leak going to send it to the corner. Nice job to run it down there. Wide-angle attack. Shanahan's there. Clark, or excuse me, Leak wants to reset Shanahan near left sideline. That doesn't work, but rally goes on. Tapped up by Spainauer. Shanahan into the midst of the libero. That's Keyless. This has been the best of the second set so far. Shanahan, soft touch there. Generals are going to get in system. Leak with just a uh, outstanding line cover there. That one holds up in the rafters for a bit, but the Generals are going to get another swing, and they end the point. Dive by Kaylee Keo was not enough. Marathon rally, excellent volleyball there from both squads. And Coach Hannah Givens got close to the court to show her appreciation for the squad's effort. That's what you love to see. That is what is so fabulous about this sport. A point can end in, in one hit, a service ace, or it can take 30 or 40 contacts. Lynchburg had a point in the Code Red game earlier this week against Bridgewater that featured, I think it was, I think it was 37 contacts, and that was on a set point in set two. I think it was 27-26, and it was just a marathon rally. Strong serve will get Lynchburg the point. Aggressive serving part of the game plan on display right there from Ava Meinhardt. Six aces last night in the win against Randolph. Seven kills. What a performance for the freshman. She continues to get better and better. 41 kills in the last six matches for Meinhardt. She's swinging it at a 313 attack percentage. She'll dig there. Leak over to Salafu. What a play to keep it alive. Solid defensive work from Grace Michener. Hornets will try to scramble over to their own bench, but they can't tap that one back up. 
This has really developed into a back and forth match now. Ava Meinhart will exit to some very, very strong congratulations from her teammates. Meinhart has been outstanding. We knew she was great at the net, but she's developing the entire package for Lynchburg. Tapped over and down by Ali Buckholtz. Buckholtz is the setter for Washington and Lee. Now, actually, beg your pardon, fans. It might have been number six, McKenna Cook. Ball hit the tape. Salafu is looking the other direction, but she's able to turn around in time to handle it. Good communication there from Lynchburg on the serve receive. Leak wants to tap one over. Dug by Blackmore, but then hard to get to. Jaina Leak gave a dive. We're tied, 9-9. This is back and forth volleyball now. Both teams have had some success on those scramble plays, plays that don't look perfect, those out-of-system attacks, saving some balls in. In fact, there's been so much saving and tapping around going on that the towels have now come out to clean up some perspiration on the floor. But both teams have had some of those plays where they've kept something alive, made something out of nothing. And then both teams have had some plays where they've gotten in system and gotten some pretty good Good looks, good swings at the nets from heavy hitters. 9-9 nine, nine ball game. We get a little break here. And a break is a good time to remind you about the Lynchburg Hornets sports network, the social media destinations, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Lynchburg volleyball specifically, their social media stuff on Instagram is great. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. The players are kind of conducting their own interviews with each other. It's really fun. You get to learn more about the team. And that's what another great thing about our sport, the personalities. Yeah, it's fun to watch what everybody does on the court. But when you find out what great personalities you've got on the team, I think that just, just makes it so much better. Nice dig by KK. Leads to an overpass. They'll try again, but get blocked and roofed. Princess Salafu and Bree Spainauer with the combination. Far right side. Wall at the net. Washington and Lee thought they had a point, but Kaylee Keough was perfectly stationed to pick one up off the hardwood. It ended up being an overdig, overpass. Generals tried to recycle the offense and do the same thing, but they were blocked on the second attempt. Shanahan, good swing, nice dive and play there by Keyless. Roll shot, Keough's on it. Green sets up Salafu, wide right, that's out of play. Tie ball game again, 10-10. Back and forth, back and forth volleyball here. The brunch session, it'll turn into lunch here in just a moment. But it feels like a buffet of good action. Just keep stepping up, getting another plate full. Green bumped one over. Hornets will try again. Shanahan gets that one down, another kill. Got her first career termination in set one. She's on the board again. Lynchburg takes the lead again. Reagan Shanahan out. Abby Barlow in. Barlow to serve. Cross country is competing today. Swim team is in action today. Tennis has got some stuff going on this weekend. Just I'm going to run down the complete list at some point. We should save it for in between sets. This is set two between Washington and Lee and Lynchburg. Generals took set one, 25-17. It was competitive early. This one has been competitive the entire way. Nice play by Penelope Keyless. The libero had to change jerseys for Washington and Lee. This gray one seems to suit her just fine. Oh, got the right hand on that one. But couldn't keep it in play. Kaylee Keough cranking it up again. Love the different offensive options for Lynchburg. Princess Salafu has been involved. Kaylee Keough always involved. Ava Meinhart has gotten some swings. The freshman Reagan Shanahan has impressed. Let's see who Green goes to this time. It was Salafu on the slide play. That one left the hand high and went out of bounds. Might have been trying to tool it off the block there with the high hit, but couldn't get a tip as that one sails too far. Washington and Lee within one. Generals have mixed up their attack nicely. Avery Myers, I, I feel like, has gotten 
Most swings, most spotlight. Sometimes looks and, and feel can be deceiving. Keo's going to get a play down the line there. Great touch, great awareness to see what the defense is giving you. That's the other thing that makes Kaylee Keo so good, volleyball fans. She has the court awareness and then the athletic ability to make those little mid-air adjustments. That's so difficult. That's what, that's what makes those great attackers really great. Pure athleticism helps. You got to be able to jump. When you can make the mid-air adjustments like Kaylee Keo does and a lot of the other great attackers do. Nice throw down by Emily, or uh, Emery Gehrig, excuse me, Emery Gehrig. You can make those mid-air adjustments. That's what makes you really dynamic and hard to stop as an attacker. And, and it just happens in a millisecond, too, where you see the defense out of the corner of your eye. And then some is, is set dependent as well. There's certain things you can't do with every ball that gets set to you. You've got to adjust to that. They call baseball the game of inches. Maybe volleyball should be the game of milliseconds. It's that, it's that really split-second decision while you're airborne oftentimes as far as where to go that separates the good attackers from the great ones. Here's Keo, cleared for takeoff again, had to tip that one. Oh, what a dig by Abby Barlow. Kind of a punch set by Green. Keo takes it, solid rip. Free ball coming over. They'll set to the middle, net contact by Washington and Lee. And it will be a point for Lynchburg. Grace Michener for Washington and Lee, freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina. She gets that, gets that big bazooka arm going. She is heavy handed over there. But Lynchburg was able to handle that one. Jane Leak jumps into a serve. Lynchburg leading by two. Call is going to go for Lynchburg. Hornets by three. And that's enough for the head coach for Washington and Lee, Brian Snyder, to take a timeout. We'll pause for a break as well. It's Lynchburg 15, Washington and Lee 12. Generals leading one set to none in set two action from inside Turner Gymnasium. There's a look at the head coach for Washington and Lee. That's Brian Snyder in his 25th season. Picked up win number 600 earlier this year. Congratulations to Coach Snyder, one of the all-time best. He's actually sitting on 605 career wins now. 605 in the win column for Brian Snyder. There's his counterpart in the game today, Coach Hannah Givens. Pretty good home record. Start to the coaching career in her fourth season, Hannah Givens. And, of course, the T-shirt she's wearing is the Cystic Fibrosis Awareness T-shirt that we're selling here inside Turner today. I bought mine, and there's other ways to donate as well. Visit the Lynchburg website. Check out the volleyball page. You can learn how you can help out the Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Initiative. That ball's on the line. Had to be in. Yeah. A, a, a high arcing lob shot that finds the corner on the line is in in volleyball, and Lynchburg using it right there. Hornets by four. Biggest lead of the set. That ball hits the tape. Another aggressive serve continues the theme from Lynchburg. Good block up front, but number four, Lily Holcomb, just powers through. 
Number four, Lily Holcomb is a 5'10 sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Just going right through the block that time. Much needed point for Washington and Lee. They trail by three. But they get to serve back and a chance to maybe stem the tide a little bit that Lynchburg has going. Keo looking for an opening. Not there. Net joust coming. Mm, somebody was on the net for Lynchburg. Kaylee Keo asking the question of the official. But it's a point for Washington and Lee. Trailing by two now. Now it's Hannah Givens that is asking the question of the official. Always something to look for on those net joust where you have a ball just kind of floating above the tape and players from each team are going to go after it. Because that's oftentimes when you will see the contact with the net. Not that it couldn't happen on another time, and it, and it certainly does. But to me, that's that seems to be the time when it happens most. And there's a conversation, and you get a look at our fearless leader, Tim LaDuca, in the background, sitting with the brand-new Lynchburg men's volleyball coach, Ryan Turner. Ryan Turner helping us out with the stats today. It is a well-oiled machine here at Lynchburg, and we will be running down our LHSN team in just a moment. We're a little, a little lighter in numbers today, but we are, we're very strong in the talent department, especially the basketball talent department. Point for Lynchburg. On a ball that spun off the Washington and Lee block. There's Reagan Shanahan again. A lot more action for Shanahan in this game. I, I love how Coach Givens will give the younger players a chance. As Reagan Shanahan got pressed into service there on that one. Ball kind of ate her up at the net. But Coach Givens really wants to give all the young players a chance. And she seems to do a nice job of maybe featuring a different young player in each game as opposed to, well, we're just going to roll out all first years for this set. She'll kind of plug and play, mix and match a little bit. Reagan Shanahan seems to be one getting a little bit more time in this game and really making it work. She's been an important part of the match so far. Ava Meinhart, we know how important she is as a freshman. She's got another point. Seven kills, six aces last night for Meinhart. Talked about what she has done in the last six games. Really coming on strong. Really emerging as one of the premier scoring options for Lynchburg. Here's Holcomb. Going to take a rip from off court. Salafu trying to go over the top of the defense. That ball's out, and it's a point for Washington and Lee. Like Princess Salafu, staying aggressive. Like Lynchburg, still trying to get her some touches, some looks. Towels will come out again here on the Lynchburg side of the court. It's not particularly hot outside, but the gym temperature is probably not quite as cold maybe as we're used to. And even in a cold gym, you're, you're, you're going to sweat, right? You're moving around, you're jumping around. You should probably break a sweat. If you don't, you're, you might be not playing hard enough. Leak is going to set Spain hour. Here comes a shot for Avery Myers from Washington and Lee. Good job to send it over ahead by Princess Salafu. Shanahan wants another, gets another. Setter attack. Leak one hands it. Tap down on the overpass. Play on. Generals with kind of an interesting looking play there, but they make it work. Bump set from Blackmore to Shanahan. Dug out nicely. And that ball is out. That ball was close, but it is out. Good awareness on the back line there by Cassie Blackmore. You know, one of the best in conference at Diggs. Last glance, statistically, she was leading the ODAC in Diggs per set. So she gave the watchful eye there. Let that one go. Strike zone awareness for ball four, if you will. Morgan Clark to serve. Oh, nice job on the dump. Lynchburg's ready for it. Maya Green left-handed over. South ball got a pretty good rip. We know Maya Green was scoring nicely in set one. Washington and Lee will put that one away from the right side. McKenna Cook, Grace Michener, Avery Myers, Riley Dubeck, Lily Holcomb. Well-rounded attack from Washington and Lee. Never really know what name you're going to call. How about that one from Reagan Shanahan. Rise and fire, freshman. She's got another one. 
exiting the game now for Abby Barlow. Love what Reagan Shanahan has done. Scoring with regularity in game number 13 for Lynchburg. Hornets lead by three. 2017, first to 20. Check that box for Lynchburg. Blackmore bumped up for Green. Cross court set for Kaylee Keo. Stuff walled up right there. McKenna Cook and Amory Garrett. Impressive. Very impressive. Kaylee Keo gave the thumbs up over to Maya Green. Try something different next time. Maybe, maybe not. Off balance dig there from Morgan, Morgan Clark. Keo had to try something different that time, just kind of ran into it. Soft touch, Hornets don't get there. Well placed on the far left side of the court by Avery Myers. That was classy from the junior from New York, New York. Just right over the block perfectly, and then soft enough to where the back row couldn't get to it. Mishandled serve, and Washington Lee is right back in this. 2020 ball game. Coach Anna Gibbons is going to burn a timeout for the Lynchburg Hornets. We'll step aside for a break as well. Conclusion of the second set might be really good. Don't miss it. It's coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. I can be. My coach has always made sure that the student comes first because not everyone will become a professional athlete. So they make sure that we will do great in academics. I knew that would only open the door to my future and I'm really excited to start my dream program for physical therapy. don't have the kind of massive rowdy crowd that we had for the Code Red game earlier this week against Bridgewater, but we got a great, great vibe inside Turner nonetheless. I think everybody's having fun here. A lot of smiles and some great volleyball to watch as well. Washington and Lee took set one, 25-17. Hornets have led for a lot of this second set. I don't want to say most of it. They're going to surrender a point there. No, no. That's the Lynchburg point. Beg your pardon, fans. Fooled me a little bit. 21-20. Lynchburg's got the lead back. Tied up at 20 all there briefly. It's three straight points for Washington and Lee. Hornets will break that. Keough has to free ball that one. Washington and Lee can't take full advantage. Here comes Meinhardt, slightly miss hit. Tapped up by Clark. Leak's going to set a cross court for Keough. Dug up nicely. There's a miscontact, misplay by the setter, Ali Buckholtz. Not clean with the set. Got called for it. Back to back points for Lynchburg. 22 20. But this second set really, really developed into some great back and forth volleyball. Just outstanding stuff. Uh, one of the officials is having a chat with a camera person here at Lynchburg. Don't know if she got too close or maybe it was the, the flash. Flash maybe. Sometimes refs won't like that. Well, you don't hear about that one much in, in volleyball. Big hit from Avery Myers. Wound up and uncoiled for a much needed point. Generals back within one. 22-21. Kenna Cook back in the game. Also, Allie Buckholtz. She's the talented setter. Pretty much the only setter in the mix for Washington and Lee. Lynchburg got one of their setters, Maya Green. A touch right there. All off the block and down. Lynchburg 23-21. Hornets are just two away. And remember, fans, Washington and Lee has not dropped a set yet in ODAC play. 13 Set wins, no set losses so far for Washington and Lee. 
in Old Dominion Athletic Conference play. They're 12-2 overall. At the net, refs didn't like that one. Lynchburg within one. 24-21. Hornets have got the finish line in their sights. Washington and Lee did win set one. Dug up by Keyless, the libero. Swung on from the near right side. Spainauer gonna try to take the set up into the rafters, bouncing around. Oh, look at the effort there, but they will not get to it. Spainauer with a big swing from the right side to get Lynchburg a set one. We're knotted up, one, one apiece. Hornets and Generals are going at least four tonight. Set three is coming up in just a few minutes on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. your career in the game by enrolling in the University of Lynchburg MBA program with an emphasis in sport management. This program opens the doors to new possibilities for a variety of careers, from being an athletic director or working in athletic administration to working for professional organizations, your favorite team to running a local parks and rec department. And employers are increasingly requesting and preferring individuals who have postgraduate education specifically looking for an MBA. And so the University of Lynchburg Sport Management concentration in the MBA program sets you up for success and it sets you apart from the many other people looking for jobs in the industry. Learn from winners. Here you will learn from professors and mentors who have spent their careers doing exactly what you want to do. Increase your marketability in an $83 billion industry. If you have a 3.0 GPA, the GMAT is waived. There's no application fee, admissions occurs on a rolling basis, and our online program is ideal for working adults. When you enroll in this program, you enroll in the opportunity to learn from the best of the best. Your professors have a wealth of experience working in the sport industry that they share with you in the classroom setting. Get in the game by getting your MBA with a sport management concentration at the University of Lynchburg. Thank you now, Hollywood, here I come. Hey, I meant yeah. to be there. Will Lindsay Piper's here. <laughs> Autograph that later. Let's A set to remember for the Lynchburg Hornets. They take it 25 to 17. 25 21, I'm sorry. 25 21, fans. It was 25 17 Washington and Lee in set one, but the Hornets do win set two. 25 21. First set that Washington and Lee has surrendered in ODAC play this season. They were 13 0 up to that point. Beat Randolph last night. It has been a lot of three-game sweep wins for Washington and Lee in general this season. They've got ten sweeps. They have a four-set win, and they have one five-set win. And actually, believe it or not, both of their losses were 3-0 sweeps. So really, Washington and Lee has not had to play four and five sets very often this year. Just two occasions, in fact. One four-setter, one five-setter. Lynchburg has gone four and five sets more. Part of that, it's, it's an interesting stat because part of it is Washington and Lee's dominance. They don't need to go four and five sets very often. But part of it, I think, maybe shows Lynchburg could be a bit more battle-tested. 
And there is a fitness aspect to that as well, as Kaylee Keo gonna send a missile to the middle of the court for point number one in set three. But there is a fitness element to that too, because if you haven't gone four and five sets, maybe when you get late in the match, maybe you're not jumping quite as well. Maybe you're not moving quite as quickly to cover on defense. So could be a small advantage for Lynchburg. Talent still matters, of course. Lynchburg's got a boatload of that, though. I think this Hornet team takes a back seat to nobody when it comes to talent. They'll get point number two of the set. We are tied, 1-1 apiece. Washington and Lee and Lynchburg. On a volleyball brunch Saturday that has transitioned to lunch. Green gonna set up KK again, stuffed. Morgan Clark tried to slide the spatula underneath but couldn't get there. Check out the well-rounded attack from Lynchburg. Kaylee Keogh's got six kills now. Meinhardt, four. Salafu, four. Bree Spainauer, four. Maya Green, the setter, has three kills. Reagan Shanahan, the freshman, has three kills. It's a career high. She didn't have a kill coming into the game. Got her first in set one. Picked up a couple others as well. KK will pick up another point there on the swing from the far left side of the court. Bree Spainauer back in the ball game. With Spainauer, Meinhardt, and Keo up front for Lynchburg. Leek, Blackmore, and Barlow in the back. Long serve from Jaina Leek, out, out of play. Aggressive serving has been a theme for Lynchburg. They only have two aces, but I think those aggressive serves have really served Lynchburg well. Pardon the pun there, using the word serve too much in the same sentence. But they've really helped Lynchburg get Washington and Lee on their heels a bit, get them out of system a little bit more, which was the whole idea. That's the whole idea behind, behind aggressive serving anyway. What a play there by Penelope Keyless. She is impressed as the libero for Washington and Lee in two separate jerseys. Spainauer made a dive for that one after a tooled block, and it will be a point for Washington and Lee. Tie ball game. Here's Penelope Keyless. 15 digs for her through the first two sets. Eight receptions. Lynchburg led in digs, of course, by their libero, Cassie Blackmore. Floating through the air was Spainauer. It was levitation there. She does that nicely. She's got great hops. Keo, flat-footed roll shot. Chance for Washington and Lee. Big rip from Dubeck. Kilo's got a moon ball type of a set. That was high arcing. Play on. Best rally of set three so far. It's back and forth. Spainauer will have to float into another one, just kind of with the heel of her hand, bopped it over. We're tied. Dubeck will try again. Stuff there. Recycling is Washington and Lee. Leak's going to set Keo. That one's kept alive. Dubeck with one more. Blackmore got it off the tape and then finally spilling out of play. Point does go to Washington and Lee. Gives them the lead now. 4 3. Really solid stuff all the way around. You kind of start some of these points giving a stat or talking about a player. And then one of those rallies develops. You can't take your eyes off it. Hmm. Whistles blow as Keyless jumped into that set. I think a Washington and Lee player wasn't quite ready up front. Might have been part of the, uh, the hair tie fell out or something that got picked up off the floor there at the net, it looked like. But now we're ready. Penelope Keyless. Didn't serve in first two sets, actually, but is serving here. Oh, she had to wear that one off the body, but how about the Generals keeping it alive? Shrapnel off the body armor from Keyless. Might end up leading to a general point here. Let's see. Bump set from Keyless into the net. Yeah, it will. Number two, Penelope Keyless. Just weathered an absolute shot, but her serving run will continue. Keeping that ball alive. Led to something very nice for the Generals. And Keyless might actually get an assist on that one. I think she platformed it up, and that led to the kill. Leak going to feed Meinhardt. Nothing there. Kind of a net joust. That one's really tight to the net. Spainauer actually tried to flip it up underhanded, sort of. Toss it over, but that didn't work. 6-3. 
Generals are out to a three-point lead all of a sudden. This little long run at the line is going to continue for Penelope Keyless. Might see a co uh, timeout from Coach Hannah Givens try to get her off the line. These situations, you're just looking for any kind of side out. That was heavy artillery from Spain Hour, handled nicely by the great defense from Washington and Lee, and they're going to get a point. Grace Michener, some firepower of her own. 7-3. Towels come out again to try to clean up that perspiration. Just if you joined us late, Penelope Keyless, the libero for Washington and Lee, actually started in a blue jersey. I don't know if maybe the jersey got damaged or the referees didn't like something about it. I'm not totally familiar with the libero jersey rules, but it is a different color. And if you're not, not a big-time volleyball fan, that can get confusing when you see one player out there in a different jersey. guess the only other uh, comparison would be soccer with the goalkeeper wearing the different jersey because they can use their hands. Lynchburg with some... Good hands at the net. Strong strike from the far side by Riley Dubeck. Washington and Lee's really getting their offense cranked up. We're tied one set to one. Don't know if maybe it was a motivational words between sets by the head coach Brian Snyder, possibly, maybe. Maybe Washington and Lee trying some new tactics or perhaps just a solid start to the set. Good teams do that even without changing anything. They just tend to play better with what they've been doing. I think the timeout might be coming from Coach Hannah Givens. Yes, it is. She will burn one. It is a strong start to set three for Washington and Lee on top. 9-3 over the Hornets on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Litchburg had a lead briefly in set three, but now it's a six point Washington and Lee advantage. We felt like a timeout might be coming from Lynchburg head coach Hannah Givens. She finally did burn one. This is a long serving run. We were tied 3-3, and I believe it's seven in a row from the Generals to get to this 9-3 advantage. We're knotted at one set apiece, so this will not be the final set of volleyball from inside Turner on this Saturday afternoon, the final one of September. Goodbye, September. Hello, October. The spooky season is upon us. We might have to have a game where we wear our Halloween outfits or something like that. LHSN theme night. So the long serving run for Penelope Keyless will finally come to an end with a ball that goes into the middle of the mesh, a much, much needed Lynchburg point. I use that phrase, much needed point, a lot. That one fits the definition. Gives Lynchburg a fighting chance in this third set. Kaylee Keough waiting for a shoe to get tied from one of her Lynchburg teammates, and now she'll press the start button and reboot the offense. Dive from Leak, pinball. Shanahan got a hand on it, but it skips out of play. 10-4, quick side out from Washington and Lee. They'll get the serve right back. On the court right now for Lynchburg, it looks like Ava Meinhart, Bree Spainauer, Jane Leak, Reagan Shanahan, Cassie Blackmore, Kaylee Keough. Keough handles, Leak sets, Shanahan jumps and scores. <laughs> Textbook point from Lynchburg. Receive the serve. Solid pass in the area of the setter. Get it to one of your big hitters. Reagan Shanahan put her in the big hitter file. She jumps well. She really moves and jumps well. Bouncy. 
I talk about how Princess Salafu doesn't need to load up with those jumps. Shanahan seems to be kind of similar, although an outside hitter. Salafu used to her in the middle. And she'll help out with a point right there. A little tandem block up front with Bree Spainauer. Lynchburg's block has been solid in the first two sets. Oh, no, that point will go to Washington and Lee. Apologies, volleyball fans. Contact with the net, maybe. Shoe getting tied here for Washington and Lee. That's Grace Michener getting ready to serve. Freshman, first year from Raleigh, North Carolina. She'll jump into that. Good velocity on it. Got Lynchburg in a little spot of bother, but Spainauer actually got pretty good wood on it. Here comes the attack from the Generals. Leak handles. Uh-oh. Cassie Blackmore couldn't hit the brakes fast enough, and she went under the net. Came sprinting in from the back row after the setter, Leak, took the first contact. Blackmore is trying to get in there, but unfortunately couldn't do so. 12-5. Good set continues for Washington and Lee. Kaylee Keough got nice rhythm into that one. Leak will platform it. Blackmore does the same. And then third time by Keough sent over on the free ball. Big swipe coming from the middle. And that's what Washington and Lee will do. They will make you pay when you give them chances to get their offense cranked up. All of a sudden, you start seeing how good they really are. Avery Myers led them with nine kills through the first two sets, but their, their offensive work has been fairly well balanced as well. We've called out Riley Dubeck's name quite a bit. Grace Michener has gotten some good swings. McKenna Cook, Emery Gehrig. Well-rounded Washington and Lee attack, and their defense is, is really, I think, what catches your attention on the stat sheet. Best in the conference in blocks and digs. They really are a well-rounded team. They don't give you a lot of freebies on offense or defense. And their serving's pretty good as well, too. Throw that in there. Huh. On cue. A serve that fell out of the sky. Blackmore looked like she read it well. And then at the end, just sort of took a nosedive. Grace Michener. She'll jump into another one. Pick out Keo this time. Shanahan will get the touch. Lynchburg going to reload into the net from Spain Hour. Salafu tried to push it back to the sky. Four contacts there, and it's another general point. They're up by 10. Didn't really see this coming. Even set one, 25-17, Washington and Lee pulled away late. It, it didn't have this kind of a feel. Even this feels more competitive. It's a nine-point deficit now for Lynchburg, but it never, never felt like a 10-point game. I don't think Lynchburg's playing terrible by any means, but again, Washington and Lee is that team. They're that good. They can make you pay. They're actually playing today without their best player. Sidney Hefner, back-to-back first-team all ODAC and a former conference player of the year. She's out with a bum ankle. Made the trip. I think she even moved around on it a little bit in warm-ups, but ended up not being able to go. So Hefner is the one that we briefly discussed. Over 1,000 kills in her career. She's almost got 1,000 digs, too. Back to the combo of offense and defense. Washington and Lee, their best player, is the epitome of that. It's 87 career matches for Hefner, who I think goes down as one of the best in university history. 16-6. Generals back up by 10, make it 11. After a stonewall at the net. Emery Gehrig at the line here. Number seven for Washington and Lee. Sophomore. Generals are loaded with sophomores of their own. Whistles blow as that ball was in the air. It looked like Coach Anna Givens took a timeout right before the serve. I think so. And we will. We will have a timeout. Let's keep it here at the moment. Washington and Lee, 17. Lynchburg, 6. Mentioned Gehrig is a sophomore for Washington and Lee. They're loaded with sophomores as well. Eight sophomores for the Generals. Six freshmen, four juniors, and one senior. So a little bit like Lynchburg as far as the roster construction and makeup. 
Lynchburg has the one senior, Princess Salifu, two juniors, nine sophomores, and five freshmen. So these teams are really similar in that regard. And there is a lot of young talent in the conference. Seems like every ball club we have seen this year has had talented freshmen and sophomore. And not just, not just people that are mixing in, getting a little bit of time. We're talking about freshmen and sophomore that the teams are leaning on for points and defense and, and all the other things that you need to win games. Lynchburg is much like that. This sophomore class, very talented, high hopes. They're working hard. Got to have that balance between the patience and then the fire and the drive. You can't just say, hey, we're going to be good in the future. We're going to get there. We're going to keep working. We're going to get there. Got to have some results now. It's that balance between process and product. You know the process is so important, but it really helps when the product is there as well. And you can win some games early, get some victories. Lynchburg has done that, five and seven this season. A win on this court against Hollins yesterday. Lynchburg two and four in the ODAC, two and two at home. They would love to get that home record back over 500 with what we would call an upset over Washington and Lee. Of course we would. Generals haven't lost an ODAC match yet this season. On the line or out. Oh, it's a tip. Tip ball there in a Lynchburg point. Throw it in the much needed category. Hornets back within 10 after the timeout. 17-7, Washington and Lee. Generals picked to finish third in the ODAC preseason poll. They were 19-11 last year. They lost to Avert in the ODAC semifinals. Uh, these two teams actually played twice last year. They met in the conference tournament quarterfinals up in Lexington. And it was a sweep win for Washington and Lee. And believe it or not, I'm going to throw a, a big stat out here for you. Lynchburg hasn't beaten Washington and Lee since 2016, October of 2016. So it's been a while. It's been a while. But it's in play today with the teams tied one set to one. Lynchburg trying to rally back in set three. What a dive by Keyless to keep that alive. If Washington Lee wins the point, they're going to remember that sequence right there. Tipped around, free ball coming for Lynchburg. Let's see if they can take full advantage. Slide play for Salafu, hit the tape. Still alive, play on. Generals get a chance, hard shot. Blackmore handled it. How'd she dig that up? Rolled over by Keough. Back row attack and that will end it. Wow. Outstanding rally. Really good volleyball there. Grace Michener will get the point. Think back to that scramble where Washington and Lee had to dive a couple times. And Libero, Penelope, Keyless with an outstanding one-hander. There's a tough serve that Barlow gets to. KK got roofed. Salafu tried to come in for the cover, but unable to get there in time. Back to a 10-point advantage. Now 11, excuse me, score on your screen is right. 19-8 is the Washington and Lee lead. If you're Lynchburg, you don't want to just say, let's save some ammunition and some energy for set four. You can't completely give up on set three here. But the writing is on the wall with Washington and Lee up big, 20-8. Tori Williamson entering the ball game now for Lynchburg. Keo out for a breather, and, and, and that change is probably reflective of Coach Givens thinking, well, let me save, save the jump count a little bit for KK. Give her a little breather. Reload, reorganize a bit, and get ready for set four. Salafu out as well. Ava Meinhart in. And don't read too much into that, fans, because Williamson and Meinhart, they've played quite a bit this season. They're not afterthoughts by any means. Shot coming from the right side. That finds the floor. Riley Dubeck again swinging it well for the Generals. That well-rounded attack. The lead is growing. It'll be number six, McKenna Cook to the service line. A sophomore from Powell, Ohio. Played by Morgan Clark. Williamson with a shot. Keyless staying alive back there. Barlow, good pass. Green wants to swing, but that's too long. 
Love that part of her game. The setter attacks usually feature the crafty little dinks and dumps with two hands, but Green has really shown the propensity and the, and the willingness to just take a full swing. You see the occasional setter-hitter combo. In fact, uh, Washington and Lee has a first year on their roster. Katie Stone listed as a setter and a right side. So she, uh, she has that skill set too. Maya Green feels kind of like a player like that. But over 1,500 assists in her career. So that's uh, passing really Green's bread and butter. There's an overpass. Can the Hornets take advantage? Green with one of those dink attacks. See if she sets this time. She does. It's Williamson picked out. Contact with the net, I think. And it's a point for Lynchburg. 23-10. Hornets not going down without a fight. And you're still trying to work on things. You're still trying to get the offense going. Green setting Williamson there. Trying to get some of your hitters to heat up. Get them some good looks. Maya Green's serve is too long. She is the team leader in aces, I believe, on the season coming into the game. Double check that stat for you. Yes, she is. 16 entering the game, 16 service aces for Green. That one will go down as a serving error. 24-10, set point here for Washington and Lee with their talented libero, Penelope Keyless at the line. Green, high toss. Barlow's actually going to have to run that down. Is able to knock it over. Up tempo set there. Not high velocity. Lynchburg took care of it. Spainauer just kind of pushes one to the back line. Nice off balance play by Barlow. Bad contact there, and that will be the final point of the set for Washington and Lee. 25 to 10. Generals really dominate the majority of that set, even though it started out very competitive. Lynchburg actually had a lead in set three. But Washington and Lee storming out to a set victory. They're on top, two to one, trying to close out the match in set four. It's coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic and Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division 3.
Getting ready for set four action between Washington and Lee and Lynchburg. Generals win sets one and three. Lynchburg took set two, 25-21. All the sets have featured some really competitive volleyball, but interesting statistical note about set three. Just one tie and one lead change. We got tied up at 3-3 and then ended up being 9-3 before Lynchburg scored again. So Washington and Lee really took advantage in that early opening sequence. They built out the lead. They would not relinquish. Whereas you look at sets one and two, uh, set one, five ties, two lead changes. Set two, seven ties, three lead changes. So sometimes the stats are misleading, but that's actually a pretty accurate reflection of how the volleyball has gone down today, and specifically that third set, just the one tie and the one lead change. Let's see the Lynchburg response. Tactical changes, maybe, maybe effort, maybe a little bit of both. Got to serve it well. Early service error from Jana Leak. Aggressive serving has been a conversation piece for us for all, all day. So Chan Coach, excuse me, Hannah Givens said it would be important to serve tough, and, and she would be willing to take maybe a few more service errors here or there. There's a limit to everything. Good strike from Kaylee Keough. Another great dig from Penelope Keyless. That ball ends up just tapping the rafters. And that caused Washington and Lee to get a little out of shape there on the transition game. 1-1, one, one, tie ball game. Keough at the service line. Through the first three sets, Lynchburg's attack continues to be balanced. There's another one. A little bit of a campfire moment again for Washington and Lee. Just some miscommunication to Lynchburg's benefit. Uh, statistically, KK at the service line now, leading the way with seven kills. Four apiece for Meinhardt, Salafu, and Spainauer. So there's the great balance. Green has three kills. And how about Reagan Shanahan, the freshman, with her first five of the season. There's a roof at the net from Ava Meinhardt. Support on the side from Spainauer and Reagan Shanahan. Great stuff. Lynchburg's block was really good in sets one and two. Not as good in set three. And the score reflected that. Good job to take some pace off and find an open area by Riley Dubeck. Still thinking about that strong Lynchburg stuff at the net, though. 3-2. Hornets by one. Penelope Keyless back to the line. She served it great in set three. And just an outstanding defender, Keyless. There's an outstanding swing, a rip from Bree Spainauer that skipped off the hands and went to the back wall. Princess Salafu back in. More strength at the net for Lynchburg defensively. And of course, Salafu can score it too. Lynchburg on top by a deuce. There's an aggressive serve that hits the net and falls in. Ava Meinhardt continuing to show her all around prowess. Meinhardt on the day has seven points total. One ace, four kills, and some blocks in there as well. 5-3. So that serve not quite as saucy. Into the game comes Maddie Weller, junior captain from Westchester, Pennsylvania, will serve. for Coach Brian Snyder's squad. He's a 1995 W&L alum. Did coach at St. Mary's in Maryland for a few years, but this is his 25th season at his alma mater. Free ball coming. See how the Hornets take advantage. Leak going to set middle, and it leads to a point. Cleared for takeoff. Bree Spainow. She's got a couple in this third set. Great stuff there by the Hornets to take advantage. And when you're trying to spring those upsets, you do have to take full advantage of the other team's mistakes. Eh, probably should quite call it a mistake from Washington and Lee because it was a, a, a good attack from Lynchburg that forced them into the free balling that one over. But you have to take, take your opportunities when you can get them. You know they're going to be minimal. Soft touch from Grace Michener. Quality shot there. 6-4. Washington and Lee down two. Michener to the line. Just a really, really fun afternoon. 
and so different from that Code Red game. But still, e each, each game is so unique. Each time you get to go in the gym, it just brings something different. I love it. Great thing about this sport, sports in general, too. Salafu got to that one up the ladder first, throwing it down for a point. Lynchburg leads by three. Paramount for the Hornets to hold on to this lead. Don't let Washington and Lee get on one of those long serving runs. Morgan Clark into the sky for Lynchburg, taken by Keyless. Oh, tight set right there. That's fun to watch. When you get the jump set and the hitter kind of almost comes shoulder to shoulder with the setter. That's really, that is really tough to stop too. Even if you know it's coming, it happens so quick. This is Vivi Vasquez into the game. I believe her first action. Freshman, defensive specialist from Florida. Back to that roster construction from Washington and Lee. Vasquez had to take a hard shot there, but kept it alive. Here comes the free ball again for Lynchburg. Green will set KK. Strong knock at the net. It will be a Hornet point. 8-5 Lynchburg. I, I know it's just been the past couple, but I really like how Lynchburg's taking advantage of those free balls. They're forcing Washington and Lee in to conceding those as well. Strong attacks from all over the court. And, and, and that's how you have to play. You, you know you might not get the point on the first swing. Got to rebuild, got to reorganize. Keep climbing the ladder, keep hitting. Hitting strong too and blocking strong as well. Ava Meinhardt, solo stuff in the middle. Right place, right time, but again, she took advantage of the opportunity. Love it. 9-5, Lynchburg by four. Fans are getting behind them. Not the massive numbers that we had against Bridgewater in the Code Red game, but these fans have been into it. They're enjoying their volleyball. And the weekend games, you probably get a, a, a bit more parents that can make it. Might not be able to get here on a Wednesday or a Friday. But the weekend has arrived. And another point has arrived for Lynchburg. Scoring from the middle. Hornets up by five, doubling up the Generals. And that's going to be a Washington and lead timeout. Oh, yeah. Lynchburg feeling it in set four. Generals lead two sets to one. Don't miss the conclusion on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person, competing at a Division III level. It created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. We're having a blast on a Saturday afternoon. Lynchburg enjoying set four at the moment. They're on top 10-5. And since this game might come down to the wire, might need five sets in this match today, let's run down the LHSN crew. We are, we're smaller in numbers, but we're strong in talent. Our director, Josh Smith, who I've loved getting to know this season. He's new to us here at Lynchburg. He fits right in. Talented cat, love working with this guy. Matty J, who I got to work with, in baseball last year, he's a man of few words, but when he speaks, you better listen because you know it's going to be big when Matty J says something. He's going to be big on the basketball court this year along with our other camera operator, John Faust, who I'm hearing wonderful things about this guy's hoops game. I can't wait to watch him on this very court here in Turner. And I think John Faust is doing double duty today, going over to soccer. Is that right, John? Are you going up to soccer to shoot that game as well? This guy's a machine. He's already pulling in overtime, and he just got on campus. Love it. That's what we're doing today, and we're glad you're watching us. You're the final piece of the puzzle, tuning in wherever you are. Maybe you're watching after the fact. That's cool, too. That's a great thing. You get, you get to enjoy these games on your own time. 10-6.
Generals with a point after the timeout. More perspiration on the floor. We've had several stoppages for that to get the towel out and to clean up the perspiration. Serve in play, Clark handled that. Big swing from Meinhardt in the middle. She continues to jump well and attack. Set coming from Green. She'll go to Kaylee Keo this time. Bump set there from Keyless. Lynchburg looking to take advantage. Blackmore platforms one to Keo. Keyless handles it. She is outstanding defensively. Here comes a in-system attack. Green wanted it over there to the far sideline, but that avenue taken away from Washington and Lee. Into the net. Was it Lynchburg into the net? Yeah. Contact up front, I believe. Good rally, though. Really good rally from both sides. I think both coaches liking that. Yep. Saw the applause there from Hannah Givens. She's not the most demonstrative coach ever, but, but you can always tell when she appreciates the effort. And, and she'll let her ball club know. See a little mini fist pump there from Coach Givens as she walks the sideline. Got to know her in baseball season. Outstanding. I think one of the brightest young coaches in the game. She, uh, she loves to pick the brain of all the other coaches here on campus. Looks to them for inspiration and motivation. That ball's out. Good read by Cassie Blackmore. 12-7. Hornets up the lead back to five. Jane Leak serving. Probably don't talk about Lynchburg assistant coach Olivia Killalay enough. She's stepped right in here on campus and just fit in beautifully. Came in during the beach season. A great time with that, getting to know the players. Getting to know Lynchburg. And really a talented coach in her own right. Givens and Killalay were both outstanding players too, which is not a must, I don't think, as a coach. It's not a must, but I don't think it hurts. You know what it takes. <laughs> That's what it takes right there. Strong stuff from Avery Myers. That was firm. That was firm, and that found a crack. With that velocity, you don't need much more than a crack in the defense. That'll get down for a point. 13-8, Lynchburg still by five. Spainauer ran down Main Street. No point there, though. Gain a leak, a little off balance. And that will kick off the hands and out of play. Off balance, I say kind of caught in between the regular platform there and, and turning it over like a set. That ball was about shoulder height for her, and that was tough. Keo punches at it. Keyless is there. Middle attack. Meinhardt got the block. What's the call? Lynchburg point. Looks to be number eight. Ryan Taylor was in the net. What about Coach Brian Snyder going to his bench a little bit more? Don't think Ryan Taylor had much on the stat sheet coming into the game. Let's see. Uh, that's what I get. I'm wrong. She's played the 32 sets this season. So call it three quarters of the matches. Ryan Taylor's been in there for Washington and Lee. I guess we just didn't see her much in the first three sets. Doesn't mean she's not part of the plan, though. Shanahan didn't want to just go with the free ball, tried to get some kind of a hit on that one, and it ends up being a miss hit. 14-10, Lynchburg still by four. I think Coach Givens is very aware that he, she does not want Washington and Lee to get any momentum in set four. And remember, fans, Generals lead two sets to one. Lynchburg needs to win to force a decisive set five. Blackmore on the move to Leak. Now it is Shanahan. Better rhythm and strike that time, but it's too long. Generals within three. Keyless with another long serving run. Penelope Keyless, the sophomore from Texas. She is, she's been outstanding. I love her game. 2.67 digs per contest. Uh, McKenna Cook is the leader in digs, but Keyless wears the libero jersey, the gray jersey. Started as a blue one. KK hanging and scoring. That was from around the attack line, the 10-foot line there for KK. We know she's got that. She can score from all areas. Princess Salafu back in the game. This is Ava Meinhardt serving. Six foot freshman from Jefferson City, Missouri. Shout out to anybody from Missouri watching the game. We would love for you to come see us. 
Oh, Meinhardt loves seeing that one go down. Perfect placement. Seam ball right between the two back row defenders. Lynchburg by five again, 16-11. Feels comfortable at five. <laughs> when it gets whittled down to, to three and two, you start looking for a panic button. That one too strong for Meinhardt. Coach Givens has no panic button on her sideline. She wouldn't push it, but as an outside observer, the lead starts getting cut down. You, you look for that button somewhere up here in the press box. Generals to serve, Maddie Weller. We've seen her at the line quite a bit, doing good work for Washington and Lee. In the white, Lynchburg in the black. Leak with sort of an off-balance set. She got called for the violation. Now Washington and Lee is within three. Key to get Weller off the line quickly if you can. I know that's easy to say. It's easier said than done. You make a lot of obvious statements as a, as a broadcaster in sports. But if you can not let those servers get in a rhythm like Keyless did in set three, Princess Salafu dropping one over the top. Love how she plays the angle as well, kind of over her shoulder, senses that open area, probably sees it out of the corner of her eye again. We talked about that, the game of milliseconds. You're trying to read the defense. But you also got to get a ball, a set that allows you to go to the open area. So many factors, 17-13. Lynchburg back by four. Good play there for Gehrig, but she sent that one right into the twine. And now Lynchburg has ballooned it back to a five-point advantage. Stay away from the panic button, Kyle. Don't go anywhere near it. 18-13. Like the serve there from Barlow. Went to the far right sideline. Green going to set Shanahan. Freshman has been impressive. Lynchburg will have to try again. Good block up front. But they couldn't keep it in play. Skips out of bounds. Point for Washington in the lead. Avery Myers back in. Three up front for the Generals are Ali Buckholtz, Avery Myers, and Emery Gehrig. Salafu, mm. that never feels good. When your own swing gets sent back into your chin, it'll happen though. You can't play this game, especially as a middle, without that happening occasionally. Got to bounce back. See what Salafu does to dust herself off and come back for more. Senior will have no problem with that. Shanahan will get the set, she'll get the point. Good job by Green to look for her. And I think the awareness by Green as well to know that, that, that Salafu just had an issue with her swing on the previous play. So let me go a different direction. Try to open up the court a little bit. Nice job by Shanahan to use that. 19-15, Hornets by four. Oh, ho, that's a monster swing from Avery Myers. Got up nicely, and the spot was available around the block. 19-16, Washington and Lee by three. Emery Gehrig serving. College Station, Texas. She'll walk into that one. Bump set by Green, and that's in there. Kaylee Keough wound up and ripped it. Ricocheted down to the ground. Lynchburg holding on to a four-point lead now. Starting to feel it as the Hornets get to 20. They need to win set four to force a decisive fifth set. Good block up front. Play on. Keough going to take one and three. She got stopped. She'll have to bump that up. Net joust. Good sequence right here. Meinhardt off the hands of Keyless and out. Lynchburg by five again. Yeah, you can really feel it now. You can really feel it. Set's not over, but you just start to feel it a little bit more as a Lynchburg fan. Washington and Lee going to get the towel out and get some sweat up. You can almost use that as a mini timeout. I definitely think there's sweat there because Keyless would know she went to the ground diving after that ball. You want to have firm footing out there. You don't want to be slip and slide on the volleyball court, but you can almost use that a bit. 
to break the other team's momentum, perhaps. Subtle. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. 21-16, Lynchburg by five. It's a two-to-one lead at the moment. Hannah Givens has got a smile on her face. A little witty banter with her ball club. She does have a great sense of humor. And the Coach Givens fit check. is it, We really got to get that going because she always looks great on the sidelines. Fashion forward, but also functional. She's got to be able to move around out there. Givens in the T-shirt today, and if you don't know, if, or if you joined us late, didn't hear us talking about it, it is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Day here in the volleyball game. So that's the T-shirt that you see Coach Givens wearing. I bought mine. Hope you can help out. Check out the Lynchburg website on how to, to, to do that. I don't know if we can mail T-shirts or not. That's, that's not my department. But um, you could definitely make a much-needed donation in the fight against cyst cystic fibrosis. That can be tough to say in a four-set volleyball match. We're getting another stoppage because the libero Penelope Keyless, the one that went to the ground and then cleaned up the sweat, she is uh, getting the arm wrapped up. I think she might have even got the road rash and the, uh, the floor burn there right through the jersey. And it might have been a, a, a blood situation, or maybe she just wants a little bit more protection. Now, that is a jersey change, and that's worth pointing out because, because Keyless had to actually get help to get the jersey on. And then once it was on, she continued to kind of paw at it and try to get it to fit the way she wanted to. I haven't seen her fool with it yet, but maybe the sleeves are a little bit too long, so she just wrapped some tape around it right there. All that speculation. Have no way of knowing. Don't even know if a sideline reporter would help there, too. Generals get a point back on the attack. Far sideline. I think it was Maddie Weller. Weller's out. Riley Dubeck back in. She'll join the front row with Ryan Taylor. And I think Grace Michener's still up there, too. Serve taken by Barlow. Kaylee Keough gets the swing. <laughs> Generals really did a great job to actually just get skin on that. But it will be another Kaylee Keough kill. Lynchburg within three now, forcing a decisive fifth set. Washington and Lee has only played one five-setter this year. Just one time the Generals have had to go five sets. That was in a victory against Marymount earlier this season. Just one four setter up to this point for Washington and Lee. This is just their second match that has gone four sets. KK stuffed. That ball's out. So the block was sound, but the ball would not stay on court. Lynchburg within two now. 23 17. Another timeout on the court. We will observe this one. We'll catch our breath, collect our thoughts, and figure out how this fourth set ends. Lynchburg needs to win it to keep the match going. Part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Private education is too expensive. Lynchburg leading in set four, 23-17. Washington and Lee leads two sets to one. So you know the situation, volleyball fans. Lynchburg needs to win to force the fifth and final set. And of course, that is only to 15. Washington and Lee, this is just their second fourth setter of the season for Lynchburg. This is the fifth time they've gotten into four sets. And they've gone the full five three times up to this point. Ava Meinhardt takes care of the overpass for Lynchburg. No. 
No, no, there was contact with the net. That's a Washington and Lee point. Coach Hannah Givens clearly disagrees. Having a short conversation with one of our officials. 23-18 now. Thought it was going to be set point for Lynchburg. Instead, it's 23-18. And a really viable chance here for Washington and Lee. Miss hit. That was a pass. That was really just a bullet to Jana Leak. She had a hard time getting a clean set. 23-19. I said it's a viable opportunity for Washington and Lee. It's becoming more viable with that point there. Leak bumping it over her head. Keough flying in. Blocked. Lynchburg will rebuild. Better strike that time from Kaylee Keough, but it's out of play. 23-20. Rally might be on for Washington and Lee. They would love to end this in four sets and not have to go to set five. Soft serve, pretty easy handle for Blackmore. Big strike there. Washington and Lee's going to keep it going into the scorer's table. Outstanding effort by Michener. Let's see if the Hornets can get it here, though. Michener's going to do it again. She's been off the court saving these balls more than on. Keo tipped. Generals have a real chance here, and what would be a great point, they're going to get it. That is outstanding for Washington and Lee. Feels like a little bit of heartbreak for Lynchburg, but you've got to give full credit to the Generals. As number 14, Grace Michener, tumbled into the scorer's table to keep the first one alive. Then she was a row into the stands there the second time. Finally, Washington and Lee got a chance to attack, and they made it work. They're down by two. Coach Hannah Givens has taken the time out now. And I think a good one there because that's an emotional point, a deflating point to come out on the losing end of. Lynchburg got so many good looks. Ava Meinhardt sent one straight down that I don't know how Washington and Lee dug it up. That was the thinnest of pancakes in the middle. Does not get any more thin than that one. But the Generals kept it alive. Full credit, high praise deserved on that point. Watch it again for sure. So a nice timeout, I think, for Coach Hannah Givens. Try to rebuild some energy. You know, and there's probably going to be some of the same cliches you would expect from a coach. Hey, one point at a time, that's in the past. Don't worry about it. But it's worth, I think, emphasizing those things, especially when you're dealing with young athletes. 18 to, to 23 years old-ish. Smart coaching there from Coach Givens. I think a well-placed timeout. See if it pays off. Washington and Lee very much in the fight. Great fight back from the Generals. A well-placed timeout of their own from Brian Snyder. 23-21. It's a two-point game, and Lynchburg is two away. And of course, you got to win by two, so the deuces are really wild. Jana Lee for Spain hour. Couldn't find the opening. Generals will attack into the net, and that one will be a Lynchburg point. That was number 14, Allie Buckholtz, who was just outstanding on that previous sequence to keep it alive. That time, couldn't get the handful, and now Lynchburg has a set point. Kaylee Keough to serve. Let's see where she goes with it. Left sideline for Buckholtz. Buckholtz is going to take one and three. Got blocked, but we're still playing. Free ball sent over. Hornets looking to take advantage. What a play by Keyless to keep it up. Another one from Buckholtz. Hits the net, and then she hit it twice. And that is the set for Lynchburg. We are going to five. Two to two apiece. What a performance from the Hornets to bounce back. First to 15 wins it here. Coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. 
that we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What you're missing. always mean so that the student comes first because not everyone's going to become a professional athlete so they make sure that we will do great in academics i knew that would only open the door to my future and i'm really excited to start my dream program for pixel therapy We're going to need all five sets to decide this one. Washington and Lee took the opener. Lynchburg won set two. Generals respond to take set three. And then Lynchburg wins set four. It really has been back and forth volleyball. Lynchburg won set number four, 25-21. Two full hours of volleyball action. I mean, this is just a delicious dish. And what started as the volleyball brunch, it's now into the lunchtime hours. And we're just having a blast with it. Generals on the left side of your screen in white. Lynchburg on the right in the home blacks here. Turner Gymnasium. Just to 15 here in set five. Couple stats to run down in the early part of this one. Coming out party for the freshman, Reagan Shanahan. She has six kills. She has an ace. She's got a couple blocks in there too. Eight points total for the freshman for Lynchburg. She did not have a kill on the season coming in to this game, Reagan Shanahan, and she has very much been a big part of the reason why Lynchburg has taken this game to five sets. Kaylee Keough serving, and Lynchburg has the one nothing lead. Nice angle over there to hit from for Avery Myers. She knocks it down. Myers has 15 kills now. The general offense is fairly balanced. But Myers leads the way with 15. Riley Dubeck has 12. Lynchburg blocked much better in set four. Bree Spainauer swinging it well from the right side. Oh, yes. Eighth kill of the afternoon for Spainauer. Kaylee Keo leads Lynchburg with 13. Spainauer now eight. Ava Meinhardt, seven. Princess Salafu, six. Reagan Shanahan, six. That's balance. That's what Lynchburg needed. They're not going to become too predictable. There's an overpass after a really hot shot from Meinhardt. Spainauer is going to get another look. And it's another Lynchburg point. Bree Spainauer. Love how she just floats and it looks like she levitates. A two way star here at Lynchburg. Member of the women's basketball team as well. Bree Spainauer. 
Oh, hot shot there. Spainauer had to go in self-defense mode. She actually got bowled over by the strike ball from the right side for Washington and Lee. Generals backing within one. Penelope Keyless to serve. She has been a delight to watch. She is everywhere, serving it well, too. No service aces, but she's been at the line a lot. Serves tough. That one actually looked like pace off just to get it in play. Spainauer not taking anything off of that. That was cranked from the right side. She's got three points in set five. Set number five, and Lynchburg's jumped out to a 5-2 lead. 4-2, scoreboard says. 4-2. Overzealous, or perhaps trying to predict the result of this next point. We'll see. Abby Barlow to serve. That's in play. Generals are going to get a swing. Dubeck handled by Keo. Back row. Salafu down the middle, over the shoulder. Back row attack. Blackmore's there. Salafu bumps it. Now Reagan Shanahan will handle it over the top. Free ball situation for the Generals. They push at it. Nice dive from Maya Green. Salafu sends it over on the second touch. Generals go middle attack and they get it to work. Emery Gehrig. Good rally. Good rally. You love the effort, I think, from both sides. Generals just a little bit cleaner there. A bit more offensive-minded, I think, on that rally as well. 4-3 in set five. Shanahan over the top of the wall. Chance to let it rip there for Grace Michener. Now Reagan Shanahan again went left-handed. Got blocked. And we've got a tie ball game, 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four game. It is Maddie Weller serving for Washington and Lee. Feels like she's been at the service line probably as much as Keyless. Yeah, she's been there more. It's actually her 25th serve of the game. Shanahan. Took a hard pass at that one, but it's dug up, as usual, from Keyless. The great defense from Washington and Lee, and it doesn't end with the back row. It's up front as well. Princess Salafu got the slide play, but it was blocked. 5-4. First lead change of set five. Generals on top. Maddie Weller serving more. Blackmore. Passes to Green. Shanahan got stuffed. The block up front for Washington and Lee is coming alive. Back-to-back -back points, putting the roof on it. 6-4. Generals by two. Lynchburg offensively, you, you just start questioning yourself a bit and say, where do we go? What do we have to do? Maybe a setter attack coming, potentially? It's one way to get around that stingy, firm block up front. Green won't be able to on that one. In fact, a free ball's coming here. Generals up two, looking for more. Miss hit, though, on the set. Lynchburg will take that. Now down by one, 6-5. There's something to be said offensively for just trying to keep pounding. It's a firm block up front. Try to hit a hard one off the outside arm, maybe. High one off the fingertips. A lot of different options for an attack. 6-5. It's a good serve from Clark, but Washington and Lee is going to get a point out of it. Barlow threw the right arm out. Couldn't get the hooks on that one and reel it in, though. 7-5. Generals by two. What a match. This is some great volleyball. Five sets of fun here on a Saturday afternoon. Keo. Heat on that one, but handled again. Blackmore. Over to Green. Salafu will tip to the corner, played by Keyless. Generals are going to keep it alive. Lynchburg, good rhythm and system, and Kaylee Keough always on time and in the mix for a point. Hornets are back within one. Salafu out. Ava Meinhart back in. Blackmore serving. It's Blackmore, Barlow, Clark, Meinhardt, Green, and Keough for Lynchburg. Blocked up front. Generals rebuild, get another swing. Kaylee Keough, 
She'll try again from the near left sideline. Same spot coming on the attack for Washington and Lee, but that's out, and that's well out. Nice job by Lynchburg defensively. A block over there on that side. Kind of had McKenna Cook, I think, maybe thinking about what we were talking. I, I got to get around that block. I got to go high. And that time, the high ball just went out of bounds. Tie ball game, 7-7. I think defense led to that point for sure for Lynchburg. There's an offensive attack right down the middle. 8-7 will change sides there. That was really nice up front. 8-7, WNL on top. The little mini set break in the middle of set five to switch sides. Looks like Coach Brian Snyder's making sure he's got a timeout left. Saw him look at the scorer's table and put up one finger and kind of nod the head. Yeah, he got one more left. Subs coming in for Washington and Lee. Few familiar faces here. This is Vivi Vasquez. She's got one serve already. She's to the service line now. General's leaning on her to get something in or, or maybe go with the tough one here. Washington and Lee by one. Only got to get to 15 in this fifth and decisive set. Green had to pull one out of the net. Kaylee Keough had a pretty good look at it. Block up front by Meinhardt and Green. Now Meinhardt will try to get in the way of that one, but it found a crack. Barlow couldn't pull it off the floor. Washington and Lee's up two. Generals by two with Vasquez to serve. Four back to receive for Lynchburg. Four of the best. Keo, Barlow, Blackmore, and Clark. Barlow will handle it. Sets to Green. Kaylee Keo. Rolled one over the top, Lynchburg down two. Blackmore, great excavation there to keep that off the hardwood. An attack from Barlow. Abby Barlow swinging on one. I think she's got one kill on the season. But no regard there, letting it fly with the right arm. Great stuff from Abby Barlow. Attacking from the back row. We had fun with her before the game. There's a social media video, social media video. Me and Barlow talking about Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Day here. What a point. 9-8, Lynchburg's within one. So it looked good, but it was also very useful. Exactly what Lynchburg needed right now. Jane Leak to serve, jumps into that. That was great. Just over the top of the net. And blocked and roofed. Spainauer and Meinhardt, Lakeside Drive Roofing Company has tied it up for Lynchburg, 9-9. Leak will get to serve again. She has really served tough in this game. She's had some service errors, but I think part of it because she's trying to be more aggressive, which is what Coach Givens wanted. There's a set from Leak to Spainauer, throwing it down, walking up the ladder and hitting the bottom floor. Bree Spainauer has come alive. She was outstanding in the fourth set, and she's been really good in set number five. Lynchburg by one, 10-9. Generals will take that final timeout. We'll pause for just a moment as well. Photo finish coming on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Bree Spainauer's big shot gives Lynchburg the lead, 10-9. The first four sets were incredible. The first four sets were a volleyball delight. And then this fifth set has just been the cherry on top, some whipped cream too. 10-9 game 
Both teams are letting it all hang out. Washington and Lee's doing it without their best player. Sidney Hefner, former ODAC player of the year, out with an ankle injury. Lynchburg's taking full advantage, and the Hornets have got another point. That was pinball action, and it got that way because of some sizzle from the swing by the Hornets. Offense coming alive for Lynchburg. 11-9. Hornets by two. Leaks serving again. Another aggressive one. Generals get in system, though. Blocked again. That's Meinhardt and Keo. Twelve nine, another timeout for Washington and Lee. They clearly had one more in their pocket. Let's just keep it right here. It is a decisive fifth set. Twelve nine, Lynchburg leading at the moment. It's it's tough to even go back and recap everything that happened in this one. But set one went to Washington and Lee, twenty five seventeen. There were actually five ties and two lead changes in that first set. Second set was even better, even more competitive. Lynchburg won it by four, 25-21, but there were seven ties and three lead changes in set two. Set three was more dominant from Washington and Lee. They pick up a 25-10 win there in set three, and then Lynchburg responded 25-21 in set four. That gets us to this point. This one's been back and forth so far. We've had some lead changes in this game. We got a, a bigger crowd rolling in here to show some support for Lynchburg. The crew has just rolled in from out there on Schellenberger. Look at, look at, look at, this, look at this group right here, making some noise, getting behind the Lynchburg team. They heard that we're in five sets. That's a lot of the Lynchburg lacrosse guys right there. They're into it. Coach Steve Kadelka has stepped inside Turner to show his appreciation for the fight that Lynchburg is showing here. And the Hornets do lead by three. Yeah, lacrosse team on their feet right now. You can hear the volume picking up. This is fun. This is what it's all about right here. This is what sports is all about. And if you're Washington and Lee, you got all these factors going against you, that makes it even more satisfying if you can come back and tie this thing up and maybe even win. Fifth set volleyball inside Turner. Another strong serve from Leak. Blackmore. On the dig, Leak will set, middle from Meinhardt. Call there will go the way of Washington and Lee. So the Generals, an after timeout point that they desperately needed. Lynchburg, five and seven coming into the game. Two and four in conference, Washington and Lee. 12 and two and undefeated in the ODAC at four and oh. But when you watch Lynchburg play, it doesn't feel like a big upset. Hornets have got so much talent. They're growing as a team. It doesn't feel like a massive upset. But on paper, it is. On paper, Kaylee Keough is as good as anybody in the conference. That was some hard cheddar from the right arm of KK. Lynchburg within two now, 13-10. And it's Keough at the service line. She's pretty good here as well. She does so much for this ball club. We talk about it every game. And as she continues to impress, we'll have to continue talking about it. Drops that serve in. Could lead to an opportunity for Lynchburg. Bump set from Blackmore. Spainauer cleared for takeoff, but dug up. Now it's Kaylee Keough or wants a big swing. It was Reagan Shanahan, I'm sorry, who has played outstanding. That one went into the net for a Washington Lee point. So good right now. More students coming in. They are filing in to Turner to get into this one. Blackmore had to scramble a bit. Keo will bump it over to Shanahan, freshman. Good pass at that one. Leak. Now Blackmore. Spain out. Change up ball. Dug up by Washington and Leak. More defense on display from the Generals. Leak will back set Spain hour. That one got into the body. And it'll get a point. Allie Buckholz just could not handle it. Lynchburg's within one from springing a big upset. 14-11. Match point right here for Lynchburg. Fans are loving it. See if the Generals can hold their nerve. This is Ava Meinhardt serving for Lynchburg. Six-foot freshman from Missouri. Here it comes. 
Good serve. Handled nicely by the Generals. Block up front, Salafu and Shanahan got it. They'll try again. Keo with a strong dig. Defended well, Shanahan to end it. What a play by Keyless. Oh, and then the dive from Meinhardt can't get there. That's as good as a sequence under massive pressure as you will see. That player right there, Penelope Keyless, she took flight. She was horizontal to one hand that one up. 14-12, Lynchburg can still win it. Keo over to Leak. Good set for Spainauer. Cleared for takeoff and cleared for sticking the win and the landing. Bree Spainauer scores it. Lynchburg wins it. 15-12 in set five. What a team win. It was a little bit of everybody from Lynchburg. And how about Bree Spainauer to finish it off? I thought Spainauer was the player of set five. But the list does not stop with her all the way around. Hornets were outstanding in this one. The coming out party for the freshman Reagan Shanahan. Kaylee Keough, tough as always. Princess Salafu, outstanding as always. The senior leader. And you can just go right on down the line. The setters, Leak and Green, they were great. What a win for Coach Hannah Givens. She continues to impress inside Turner. And the fans loved it. There's. There's the Lynchburg team showing their appreciation to the fans that came in and made some noise in set five. Tough luck there for Washington and Lee. They had some players that absolutely blew us away. I think Penelope Keyless, the libero, probably at the top of the list, but certainly some others deserving. Wow. I don't even want to leave, but we got to, we got to send it home somewhere. We got to get uh, some of our crew up to Schellenberger for the women's soccer game. So we'll try to wrap it up. Boy, revisit this one often. This was a great win for Lynchburg. They moved to three and four in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Six and seven overall now for Lynchburg. They hand Washington and Lee their first ODAC loss. Generals fall to four and one, 12 and three overall. Lynchburg back in action on Wednesday at Randolph, taking on the cross town rival. That's gonna be a great game. Wednesday, October 4th. We're back inside Turner for volleyball on Friday the 13th, October 13th. Eastern Mennonite will be in for our entire LHSN crew. Kyle Haney saying so long. Lynchburg wins it in five. They spring the upset and beat Washington and Lee.